Locked up and knocked up with your host, Jenny Shakeshaft. Hello, girl. I'm kind of freaking out. Why? What's going on? I, I, I just bought a pregnancy test because I think that I actually might be pregnant. You're not pregnant, dude. You're probably about to start your period, which is why you feel fat. Um, okay, I don't remember actually saying I felt fat, but I actually missed my last period and I've, I've been super tired this whole week. Yeah, again, that's probably because you ate like shit this week, didn't you? N- no. Did you pee on it yet? Come on, I'll stay on the phone with you. Okay, hang on. Okay, so I have three minutes. Okay, well, there's no way, Jen. Well, there's kind of a way, though. Have you guys talked since you broke up? No, he blocked me. Girl, you're not pregnant, okay? So just another subject. Really quick, can you go look at my profile and tell me if this photo is good or great? Because it needs to be great. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks great. Great, great or like good? Come on. You know I'm a psycho about this shit, dude. Be honest. Uh, yes, it's great. It's great. You look amazing. Uh, oh my God. I can't even tell what the hell this test is doing. Hafa show. It hasn't even been three minutes yet. Calm down. Yeah, but the test looks like a blob of blue. There's like not even lines, but it's already saying pregnant, which doesn't make sense because it said that like the minute that I peed on it. Isn't it supposed to take like 10 minutes or something? I mean, what kind of test did you buy? The cheapest one. I don't know. Girl. I know. I wasn't thinking. I just, I just grabbed something cost effective because I'm on a budget. But seriously, I can't read this fucking thing. What the hell? Oh my god. Just leave it alone, okay? It needs to develop or something. Jen, focus. Great, great or good? It Great, great. I said it already. Oh my god. Oh my god, my god. Okay, honestly, it's been like 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure that it says pregnant, but the double line thing still looks like a blob, so it's confusing. You're not pregnant. I peed on both tests in this stupid box, and it's saying pregnant, I think. Hang on, I'm just going to send you a picture. Okay, hold on, let me look. I can't read this thing, Jen. Hello, I can't either. I feel like you're not pregnant. You're just feeling fat, dude. Girl, read it again. It kind of says pregnant or whatever. Just try to figure out that blue blob because it's supposed to say two blue lines or one blue line. So I'm reading the instructions. It's... uh, Why did you buy a discount test? What is this fucking thing? Because it's COVID and I'm trying to save money. Remind me never to take a cheapo test again. Yeah, this test is whack as fuck. I can't tell. Great. That's fucking great. (laughs) I'm just going to go back to the store. I'm going to buy a real test and you are going to stay on the phone with me so I don't have a meltdown. Okay. Jen, what if you're pregnant? I don't even know. Okay, well... Don't freak out yet. Let's just wait till you take the next test. Okay, I'm here. Fucking two times in this store. This guy's gonna be like, is this woman an idiot? It's fine. Fuck the guy. Who cares? Yeah, I know. Hold on. I'm buying the most expensive test. I mean, how much, Jen? It's fine. Just hang on. How much? It's like $40. Who cares? Fucking two tests later, if you ever get pregnant, please buy an appropriate test. Do not go bargain hunting in a moment like this. I mean, I'd have to have sex to get pregnant. Okay, well, just, you know, remember this moment. Okay, what's the test say? It says I'm pregnant. No, you're not. Dude, I just bought a digital test. It is blinking pregnant. That's a little excessive, girl. What's excessive? A digital test? Come on, how much was that? I told you it was $40. Okay, fine, just send me a pic. Oh, oh my, my god. god. You're I'm pregnant. pregnant. Hi there. My name is Jenny Shakeshaft. You may have seen me in movies like W with Oliver Stone, Walking Tall, or the television show Workaholics. But it's safe to say I have officially worn many hats in the entertainment business. I launched a production company. 
Monument Productions that is hosting this series, as well as worked on the executive production side of Jay and Silent Bob, the reboot with Kevin Smith, all prior to the global shutdown of our economy in 2020 because of COVID, like you guys didn't know. This has definitely been a challenging year for all of us, and for those of us that work in entertainment, it's been devastating. My income has completely dropped off. Jobs and production aren't anywhere close to being back on track just yet. And for the most part, the city of Los Angeles feels like a used up garbage fire ghost town, which let's be honest, it was already garbage before, but it's now starting to permeate rot and stench. Looking back, it may have been the worst timing ever for me to launch such a huge endeavor and company as Monument Productions, not knowing what was just around the corner. But then again, I suppose that's the beauty of life. Not knowing everything and practicing living in the moment, going with the flow, and adapting to the ever-changing environment. I remember when the lockdown first started and everyone was scattered on how to respond and what was going to happen. Or if you were going to get COVID. I made every effort to try to keep my company afloat, producing multiple broadcasts that we shot on Zoom. God, I hate Zoom. So these online broadcasts I produced were the first stage of playing in the new entertainment space. We had all kinds of shows lined up, such as comedy shows, variety shows, cooking shows, talk shows, and musical performances. And I had predicted we'd be moving to an audio-based or internet content media platform the previous year, which is why I was strategizing my company into that space. And we still have a ways to go to really transition, but COVID sort of forced everyone's hand a bit. So during this broadcast period with Monument Productions, I ended up meeting my soon-to-be baby daddy. And he was funny and charming and had a great voice <laughs> and made me feel alive the day I actually met him in person, which let's be real, being locked inside for a period of time might lend itself to that. But for the beginning stages of a new relationship and the romantic version of the story, let's just say he brought me to life. However, we'd only met online at first because everything was in lockdown. So I remember when we completed one of our shows, my friend called. And he said, Hey, Jay, my boy was asking about you. He wanted to know if you're single. And I laughed flattered. So what'd you tell him? I said, hell no, bro. She's way out of your league. Plus, she's like engaged to some shit. Uh, yeah, we broke up like a year and a half ago, I said. Oh, shit, really? So for those of you who don't know me, I was engaged for about five years and then everything fell apart. So I actually hadn't met anyone that stole my heart since then, nor was I considering another serious relationship. I kind of resigned myself to just working and being solo. However, after my call with my friend, I had a yearning desire to explore this new guy. So naturally, I sent him a nice text knowing that he would for sure reply back and probably even call me. So fast forward to our first date, which was the literal second time I'd been out in society with another human, other than to visit the grocery store or take a walk with my cat. And yes, my cat goes on walks because he is a badass. So you could say our date was one of the more magical moments in my life. I walked downstairs to meet him and he had his top down on his convertible, a cowboy hat, and flashed a gorgeous smile with dimples. What a dick. <laughs> he knew the power behind those dimples. Hmm? We drove to the beach the very night of a blue moon. So you could say it was a once in a blue moon moment. And the best part is after we laughed and hung out, listening to the waves in Malibu, we looked out onto the water to see magic rolling in. A luminous, glowing blue swell. And it only took a moment to Google that this particular evening, the ocean was filled with bioluminescent waves. Now, for those of you who are wondering what the heck that means, Will the ocean waves glow blue? Apparently it's because of microscopic photoplankton that are in the waters, but either way, it was one of the most beautiful things to witness. So naturally, um, we got butt naked <laughs> and ran into the waves to play. It was so much fun to paint with water. I felt like we were in Avatar or a cool Disney movie. And there were a few other people just on the beach doing the same thing in the water. You could hear all of us reacting in different ways. Oh my god, this is amazing! Oh my god, guys, look! Another blue one, come over here! I would have thought that my second night out during this global shutdown would lead to such a vivid memory with a new human in my life. One who, for whatever reason, the minute I sat next to him in the car, I felt like 
he was a soul I'd known for eons. When we eventually made our way back home and said our goodbyes, but little did either of us know what God had in store for the two of us, just waiting around the corner. We had our fair share of safe fun over this pandemic period. Two of our first adventures together, we drove out to the wilderness and tried mushrooms, which I know if my parents are listening to this, they are cringing about now. Jennifer, you better not be doing drugs, echoed my mother's words, followed by a strong, you're grounded, Jennifer, from my father. To be honest, I had only just discovered mushrooms, and I have to tell you, I am now a huge supporter of them. If you don't abuse them or take them like a drug, but rather as a medicine to teach you and guide you along your journey, I think you can actually grow a lot with the use of them intermittently. So of course, baby daddy and I drive out to Zion and have the most amazing mushroom trip together. Literally, we laughed, we saw aliens, we laid in the car looking at the stars with the top down, And we had a lot of sex, but like magical sex, because as I've previously mentioned, we jumped on the magic train starting with the blue bioluminescent waves, so we had to keep that going for as long as possible. A few weeks later, we end up going to a buddy's house of baby daddies, who is currently going through a divorce, and he was about to embark on a road trip on his motorcycle to Ohio. So after a night of sushi and eating on the living room floor of his place with the world's cutest dog, Fluffy... That's not actually her name, but go with it. (laughs) His friend says, Yo, I'm having someone drive my dog out to Ohio for me, so she's there when I get there. But since this whole city is shut down, you guys should come instead. Maybe you could take Fluffy and make it like fun little getaway. Baby Daddy and I look at each other. This is a moment of clarity for us. If we could make it through this, which would inevitably end up being a three-week road trip cross-country with a dog during COVID, we might be a thing, right? So fast forward, we're now traveling the States. Our first day on the road, about two hours in, we hear a massive BAM and realize that we have a flat tire. I felt like this was one of our first tests, which we passed with flying colors. Also, I am a Colorado born and raised woman, so changing a tire is kind of in my DNA. But truthfully, it was all in all a joint effort. And we continued on landing in places you typically wouldn't go, like the world's biggest meteor crash site or a little haunted town called Eureka Springs, where we played with tigers. I even named one Banana on a whim. Eventually, we made our way to Ohio with Fluffy, who we fell madly in love with before heading back home. You could definitely say this was the beginning of our love story, but by no means did it mean things would come easy. I'm so grateful for this time we took, and honestly, I feel God gifted it to us. I'm such a hardworking person, and so taking time off has always been a challenge for me. Though I felt this might be one of the few times I could just rest, reboot, and rethink how I was going to approach reinventing myself when I got back. On our way back, we stopped by my folks' place at my sister's spot in Colorado before eventually arriving home to the fading city of Los Angeles. I was living a dream, though. The world was shut down, work was halted, and reality was about to strike. This relationship was still way too new to know what would happen just yet. I snapped back from my hiatus when the harsh reality set back in, reminding me of my struggles to find work with no industry jobs on the horizon, money dwindling, and life stresses taking their toll. So when our city began to open back up again, baby daddy and I walked headfirst into our initial bout with conflict. The magic we'd been experiencing began to dwindle and our real life pulls beckoned to creep back in. Differences among us arose despite our mutual feelings of love and slowly but surely we decided to part ways. But within one week of our split, a surprising new development came to life. Are you gonna keep it or what do you think you want to do? I don't know. I mean, We just broke up like a week ago, so there's that. Either way, you have time to decide. Yeah. Are you going to tell him? I don't know. Not this second. I think you should wait till you know what you're going to do. The thing is, even though I don't know, I just feel like I need to call him. Girl, make your decision first. Trust me. I mean, I'm not in my 20s anymore. No, you're not. I just don't know what I'm waiting for. This city is becoming a bigger shithole every day. I'm not getting any younger. And honestly, I just need to meditate on this for a minute. Yeah. Just take your time, girl. It's going to be okay either way. One thing's for sure. A baby will bring you more love than any L.A. guy could ever do. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going to go to sleep. Are you going to tell your parents? 
yeah, I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll just call my folks before I decide what I'm going to do and just say like, hey, I'm pregnant or I might not be. Just thought I'd ring the alarm. No, I'll let everyone know when I know, but I need to call baby daddy first. He deserves to know. My first phone call to baby daddy was interesting, to say the least. He had gotten higher than a kite on liquid weed in an attempt to drown out his sorrows. So apparently my call was not only surprising, but horrible timing. Uh, hello? Hello? Hey, it's me. Uh, hey. How are you? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little high, to be honest. Oh. What's up? Are you okay? Well, I, I kind of need to talk to you. Can you come over? Um, sure. What's up? I just need you to come over. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. I hung up the phone, thinking through this conversation. No clue how he would react or if he would be supportive or not. Just lost in my own collage of inner monologues. And suddenly my phone rang again. Hello? Uh, hey, it's me. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm like really, really high. Like really, really high. I took this like liquid weed because I was fucked. I was fucked up. I was trying to like move on from us, and I, I just I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jen. I just don't think that I can drive. Yeah, sure. That's that's okay. I'll come get you. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like so super. I'm fucking high right now. <laughs> it wasn't until later when he was sober I would learn baby daddy was excited to hear from me again, but had literally screwed himself into a state of inebriation that evening. So. We got back to my place and sat on the couch so I could share the news. So, I have news. Okay. Um, so I missed my period and I'm... You're, you're pregnant. I'm pregnant, yeah. Whoa. I'm sorry. I just need to... I, hold on. Can we go in the bed? This is really uncomfortable. I'm like super high. He got up to go lay on the bed, but before he walked in the room, he turned around and he said... No, I thought you, like, had news to tell me. We talked a little bit that night before he passed out like a rock. I figured I'd just have to wait till tomorrow. But despite his state of being, he was kind and sweet and supportive. And the takeaway, I mean, he just looked at me and said, Whatever you want to do, baby, I'm, I'm here if you do, and I'm here if you don't. I wanted to believe him, and at the moment, I was just grateful that he had said the right thing. Time would tell if this would become my reality, but it definitely felt good to hear. It took me a couple weeks to really decide how or what I wanted to do, but I couldn't deny the feeling I got in my soul urging me to follow this road. Deep down, I knew I may not have many more chances to experience this chapter of life. Despite the fact I was still trying to figure out how I was going to take care of myself, float my business, and continue forging onward in a male-driven entertainment industry, I knew I was embarking on a moment of change and headed into a completely different world. And thankfully, for now, I had someone who was willing to take the journey with me. I can't tell you I have anything figured out. I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared shitless of taking on this endeavor during such a precarious time. But sometimes in life, you know, you're given a gift from the universe. And somehow, some way... It'll all work itself out. This has been Monument Production.